Nearly a year after Cosmos had aired, Sagan's long divorce from Linda finally went through. On June 1st, 1981, four years after they fell in love, Carl Sagan and Annie Dreen were married. Carl was flying. I mean, you know, he had been married twice before. It's not as though it was his first wedding, which it was for Annie. She was having her storybook wedding, but it was very much as though it was his first wedding. He um, was a giggling groom. It was one of the most romantic weddings I've ever seen. The launch of the space shuttle Columbia in 1981 marked the end of the golden era of space exploration. While the shuttle made its extremely expensive orbits of the Earth, NASA had neither the money nor the inclination to plan missions to other worlds. Sagan and his colleagues were livid, but powerless. The shuttle is, uh, you know, they, they, they send uh, three, five, seven people up in a tin can, 200 miles up. They go around the Earth for a week and do something. The tomato plants don't grow or something. And then they say, We've done space exploration. That's not space exploration. Space exploration is going to other worlds. Sagan protested NASA's policy, but at the same time, he too had shifted his focus back to Earth. After all Sagan's searching, this was the only planet that was known to have life. And with the birth of his daughter, Alexandra, in 1982, Sagan became determined to do what he could to protect this fragile world. Then, in March 1983, Sagan's own life was threatened by a toxic appendix. An emergency appendectomy went badly, and Sagan nearly bled to death. The surgeon said, you just have to get him out of here. He's going to die. So we um, rushed by ambulance to Upstate Medical Center in Syracuse, where they performed a 10-hour operation and saved his life. After success, after celebrity, Carl Sagan had become an activist. His decades of scientific work on other planets made him fear for this one. It is therefore possible that a full nuclear exchange would be not just an event which wipes out a few hundred million people in the northern hemisphere, but does significantly more serious damage. An extraterrestrial visitor looking at what we've done would conclude that uh, we have embarked on a mad course designed not to help but to end the modern technical civilization on our planet. His protest against nuclear weapons even took him to ground zero, the Nevada nuclear test site. It is foolish for the United States to continue testing when the Soviet Union has uh, unilaterally, unconditionally stopped underground testing and invited the United States to join. He and Annie were arrested there in 1986. Sagan also traveled around the country and the world speaking out on environmental issues that sprung from his work on other planets. The planet is a unit. No one nation can solve the greenhouse problem alone. You have to uh, uh, stop the production of chlorofluorocarbons. The politicians and the religious leaders and the weapon scientists have been at it for a long time, and they've made a thorough mess of it. I mean, we're in deep trouble. What we fail to do now imperils our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. In 1991, Annie and Carl received another reason to save the planet, a son whom they named for Carl's father, Sam. In 1992, Carl Sagan's nomination for membership in the prestigious National Academy of Sciences was scuttled by a few members. That really hurt, because it was such a, it, it was a kind of unsolicited punch in the nose. The snub was short-lived. The next year, Sagan received the Academy's highest award, the Public Welfare Medal. It recognized Sagan for a lifetime of work in science and for science. Science is, is not just a, a joy, but it's, it's a practical matter. The future of the country, the future of the world depends on the uh, proper and humane use of science and technology. 
Carl Sagan had done all he could to save science, and science was about to return the favor. After a long career packed with accomplishments, Carl Sagan was happy just spending time with his teenage daughter, Sasha, and young son, Sam. But one day, Annie noticed a nasty lingering bruise on Carl's arm. She sent him to the doctor. The doctor called me up, Carl was out, and said, uh, we've made the silliest mistake. We've mixed Carl's blood test up with someone else. This is the blood test of someone gravely ill. It couldn't possibly be Carl. A second blood test confirmed the terrible news. Sagan had a rare blood disorder called myelo dysplasia. Without a bone marrow transplant, he would be dead in six months. He had to find a donor who was a perfect match. His sister was his only shot. We found that although we are the only two siblings, uh, we remarkably matched all factors, even some that were not necessary. The operation was successful, but very hard on the patient. Everything is, I'm glad to say, just fine. And the new book? The new book is coming out in January. It's called, uh, it's called, uh, what is it called? Uh, the Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark. And it's about uh, science and pseudoscience, the importance of scientific thinking. Sagan was not doing as well as he hoped blood work showed he needed a second transplant in July 1996. Another grueling procedure kept Carl Sagan in the hospital for weeks. But on his first day out of the hospital, Sagan received news that seemed to vindicate his decades of hard work and speculation. Life on Mars. An asteroid found in Antarctica showed fossil traces possibly left by Martian microbes. The news itself was like a transfusion. He was still weak, but not too weak to add his voice to the chorus of wonder. The implications are profound. They suggest that uh, life can arise not just on one lonely planet, but uh, on countless planets. And I was sitting with our kids our five-year-old and our 13-year-old. And I, tears came to my eyes. And I said, this is what your father does one day out of the hospital, you know, soaring on Mars. Sagan's prognosis from the second transplant was excellent, though his recovery was slow. He gives a good name to science because he is so good himself. Here's a guy who everybody knows whether you're walking in New Delhi or in Tokyo or in New York or anywhere. And they're all saying, you know, you're my teacher. You taught me something about the universe. Well, I would like to see American capabilities and talents and technology involved with other nations in a uh, grand long-term exploratory effort that uh, culminates in making the human species a multi-planet species. That's, I think, our long-term destiny, if we're not so foolish as to destroy ourselves first. Sagan died on Friday at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle. He was surrounded by his family. At the time of his death, he and his wife and longtime collaborator, Annie Dreen, were preparing to launch a new television series about the cosmos, this one aimed at children. It was to be called Cosmos for Kids.